Thank you for joining us today and welcome to the ERM Online Church. This is Sunday, August 23rd. Um, it's a, a minute and a few seconds, almost two minutes after 6 p.m. GMT plus one. I want to welcome you to this service. If you're joining us from anywhere around the world, and just feel free to click on the share button and share the link. Um, feel free to host a watch party. Um, I'm so glad to welcome you back online. I, I'm, I'm glad that God has preserved our lives, kept us alive, and has made it possible that we can gather this evening. It's, um, it's a privilege to host you as we go into the ministry of the world. And um, I'll be introducing the theme and giving us some updates. But just before we do that, I want to give people the opportunity to click on the share button and share the link. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for friends, members of the community um, around the world. I, I want to welcome you once again, and I thank you for, for, for joining. Just like I've said, just click on the share button and then share the link. Take a moment to do that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're able to join. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We will be praying in a moment. This is um, the evening service. And then um, I hope that you will be able to join this service and enjoy the service. We thank God for the opportunity. And we know that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations. And then the end must come. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just click on the share button and share the link. Just take a moment. Share the link. Welcome. I want to welcome you all. Indeed, it's a privilege to host you. I thank God for, for, for the service. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you're looking forward to it. The Bible says that Jesus was ministering in a certain place and that the power of the Lord was present to heal them on that day. There were many doctors of the law, many experts, many religious leaders, and the power of God was present to heal them. And Jesus also said that you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea. And then he says to Judea and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So it's, a, it's an honor to be called to the gospel. And I hope that as we listen today, that you will make forward spiritual movement. Thank you so much. We'll be praying in a moment. Click on the share button and share the link. And of course, feel free to host a watch party. Invite friends, invite friends, invite family. Uh, and um, your host today is John Chibuzo Enelama. I'm looking forward to this session. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will be praying in a few seconds. Click on the share button and share the link. And thank you for joining. Thank you. Hallelujah. I do look forward to our service today. The few minutes we always share together. We thank God for this. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We'll be praying in a few seconds, exactly five minutes after. Father, we thank you for this moment. Hallelujah. We thank you for for the tremendous opportunity to approach your throne of grace and mercy. Hallelujah. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for making all things possible. Father, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. And you have called us to this place today. We pray as we've come in your presence that you refresh us, re-energize us. Father, re-empower us. Father, push us forward. Thank you, Father, because we know that you've heard. We pray that you exceed all of our expectations wherever we are listening whatever device we're using, however we're dependent on technology, we pray that you will exceed all of our expectations. Let our lives not be the same. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you for the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Father, we know that though the world is changing, that your word remains unchanging in a changing world. We pray that the Holy Spirit will empower us, anoint us afresh to have to exert a lasting positive influence on all the cultures around us. Thank you, Father, because we know you have heard. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, if you've been following us, we've had a break in the last two Sundays, and I'm, I'm, we're happy to be back. Thank you very much. Now, um, we were on a series, making the most of the second half of the year, and it will be very necessary to be able to bring to what I might call this series always have partial conclusions because you bring something to a, a closure, but you know that you're going to reopen the subject in the future. It was a burden laid upon my heart to say, how does a person 
make the most of his life? How do we maximize our life? How do we maximize opportunity? And we started this series. We've had at least three episodes on that, covering subject by subject. And today, we, we want to see where we can land because um, as we prepare to enter the month of September, I would, be, I would love to look at what I call radical discipleship, what it means to, to, to connect with Jesus in a radical way that makes us relevant in the culture in the day in which we live. There's so much upheaval going on around the world. And sometimes people ask the question, how should we respond to the changing times? Sometimes people have made the, have implied by the statements they've made that maybe God needs to adjust the word of God and update God's word to make it more culturally relevant in the times and in days in which we live. So we want to look at it from God's perspective, which is represented by the word of God. So that's called radical discipleship. But for now, uh, today we, we are we're going to see where we can land with the subject of how to make the most of the second half of the year, which is obviously very far spent. Today is, a, is Sunday, 23rd of August. We are very far indeed into the third quarter of the year. So we'll open your Bibles with me to the book of Luke chapter 14. If you have a Bible and you're listening, you have a device, please join me. Join me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter, Luke chapter 14. Okay. And then um, I will read from verse 28, Luke chapter 14, verse 28, praise the Lord, Luke 14, verse 28, I happen to be reading from the King James Version, I might be able to consider a few other versions, if that will be useful and helpful to us, Luke chapter 14, verse 28, so in the King James Version, it says, for which of you intending to build a tower, seated not down first, and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish his sufficiency, here means sufficient funds, resources, both human and otherwise, less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, that all that behold all, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king, seated not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else why the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desired conditions of peace. So likewise also who he be of you that forsaken not all that he, he had, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his silver, wherewith shall he be salted? It's neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So this connects, makes connection between what we are studying and what we intend to study, but I focus on the study. So it says precisely in verse 28, for which of you intending to build a tower and seated not down First, to count the cost or a, or a king that is going to war that does not take stock of his capacity, his, um, his um, assembly of war equipment, what his, the, the size of his army, the nature of his army, and compares it to the army of the opposing king and sees whether it is better to actually surrender or to go into battle. Well, both these concepts, the concepts of sitting down to consider the cost of a tower, before you build, before you lay the foundation and start to build on the superstructure. Okay, the foundation, as we know, is the substructure. Before you build on that foundation or before you go to war, and indeed before you take on, on any project, indeed before you live life itself, it says, who, or which of us does not first sit down to count the cost? Does not sit down to do, look at the, the size of his army and so on and so forth? All these thoughts focus on planning. It's, and this is, these are the words that Jesus spoke. What Jesus is really saying here, the essence of Jesus' counsel and advice, is that we need to sit down, we need to plan. We need to be able to take stock of our lives and ask ourselves, where am I? There are three questions I've been taught over the years that are extremely important. And I'm going to, I, I mentioned them today. The first question is that, where am I? Where am I in the context of God's plan? Where am I in the context of 2020? Where am I in the context of the purposes of God? Where exactly am I? The second question is that, where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? What is it? What is the direction of the journey of life? Of course, we've, we've mentioned this in the past, and we call it the concept of a life purpose. But of course, every single day, you're moving towards a direction. But it doesn't mean that every day that you're going to fulfill your purpose. It does mean that you must move in the right direction. And so the question today is that, where exactly, where am I and where am I going? So that second question, where am I going, is a question that is important to you. Where am I going? And the reason why that question is important is because we do not want to put on the mindset of a victor 
or sorry, of a victim or a survivalist or somebody that's just trying to get by in life. Because if we don't consider where we're going, we might be in that place in life where we're not able to maximize our potential. We might even fail to recognize our potential. And the third question is that how do I get there? And these are the thoughts. This is similar. Because Jesus is saying in this passage, you know, he makes two, he uses two examples, the examples of building a tower and the example of going to war. In the building of a tower, it costs you something. You need resources, all kinds of resources. You need to have a blueprint or a plan, okay? So when he says you want to sit down and make sure you have developed a blueprint, a plan, because even though it sounds simple, I'm building a tower without a plan, Everything can go awry. It can actually get out of hand, okay? So the blueprint, which is called the plan, gives us a, a, a pictorial view of the nature of this project. And then, of course, you need a quantity surveyor to cost this, this blueprint, to, to, to take the drawings and then convert it to a bill of quantities that tells you what materials you're using, what materials you will need, or how much that will cost you. And, and, and the total cost of the project, so that you'll be able to look at what it's going to cost you to complete the construction and what you really have. And if there is a gap, what should you do about that gap, okay? It's the same thing with our lives. We have to sit down and say, what is the blueprint that God has presented? Well, praise God. The truth about life, we have said this very often, is that God does have a blueprint for our life. And Every day of our life, we should live in alignment with that plan. So we all, we, I have said this, and I want to repeat this, that the, once we are born and we come of age, the most important thing in life is to be able to discover the plan of God for our lives. Okay, And then once we have discovered that plan, the most important thing is to spend our time trying to fulfill that plan. Of course, if you have lived long enough, you are old enough, you know that that plan is not always a straight course. That plan is not always a linear equation. That plan is not always moving from point A to point B. Sometimes it's a zigzag movement. Okay, But what's important is that a man must be able to sit down and think into the future in by yielding his life to God, obviously, and, and planning with God so that you will be able to make the most of time. And the nature of God, as we find from Scripture, is that God reveals his plan step by step, precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there. God never shows us the entire picture, no? You know, and we know this from the life and the story of Joseph, you know, and many other um, important figures of the Bible, personalities of the Bible. We know that Joseph received two defining dreams that define his life. We also know that Paul had an encounter and received a few prophetic words that define his life. We know that Joseph, that Moses himself had a premonition or what you might call a conviction about the nature of the assignment he received without the final details. Because the Bible said that he supposed that the people of Israel would have understood how God through his hand would deliver them. We know this of Abraham, who was Abraham, that God said to Abraham, he said, I, he said, I will send you to a new land, a land, a land of promise, okay? And he says, Abraham obeyed, not having the details. Abraham obeyed, not knowing where he was going. So when we talk about the blueprint of our lives, it's something that unfolds over time. But the relevance of it is that even though we live in 2020, and we live in a year that is an unusual year, a year that, that so much has happened, so much that was not planned that has happened, so much that was planned has been suspended, we've seen many things happen, it's been... Very, it's been very upsetting. It's been an upheaval. It's been a pandemic. It's been a challenge, but it's a global challenge. And so, um, if we, if we partner with God or come into a place of alignment, we'll understand the fact that nothing takes God by surprise. So, the question I want to ask you, um, which is the first question here, is to say, where exactly have you been in 2020? Where are you? Where are you in the context of this year? Where are you in the context of God's plan for your life? Where are you in the context of that blueprint? Where are you in the context of in the context of your understanding of God's purposes and God's plan? And then where are you in the context of the pandemic and all that has gone on? What how have you used your time? Have you been able to get a handle of time? Have you been able to use your time well? Have you been able to make those necessary investments? One of the prayers we should have been praying this year, and I hope you have prayed that prayer, is to say, God, in the midst of all that is going on, how do you, what adjustments should I be making? And how should I be moving? What should I be dropping? And what should I be picking up? What, what kind of person should I be becoming? And what kind of, what, what are the qualities that I need that I don't have? In other words, we're talking about character development. We're talking about improvement. We're talking about acquiring some skill, preparing ourselves, reading, and so on and so forth. 
So that first question is, where exactly are you? And I want to ask you, because this was the question God asked Adam in the Garden of Eden. He said, Adam, where thou? Why did God ask that question? There was a reason. Because there was a movement by Adam, and there was a gap, a discrepancy, a misalignment between Adam and God. And so God came in the cool of the day to commune with Adam, to, 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 to fellowship with Adam, to plan with Adam, to instruct Adam, to counsel Adam, to impact life onto Adam. But Adam had disobeyed God and there was a misalignment. There was a problem. And God came to the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter, he said, Adam, where art thou? So, is, is, so what I want to say again in the, as we continue, this was actually Genesis chapter 3. When God came, he said, Adam, where art thou? What I want to say here is God is asking you and I the same question. Where are you? Where are you? Where art thou? Where are you today? Where are you in 2020? What do you see? God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, what do you see? He looked up. He said, I see an almond tree. He said, you see where, but you need to see some more. When you look, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you perceive with your eyes? Because God does not want us to be deaf spiritually. Does not want us to be deaf spiritually. Does not want us to be dumb. Does not want us to be blind. He wants us to hear. He wants us to see. He wants us to perceive with our hearts. So I want to ask you, where exactly are you? How have you fared? How have you fed this year? In many of the conversations we've had, we've talked about a lesson from Paul the Apostle, who said in Acts chapter 20, he said, that I might finish my course. And then who said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, I have finished my course. So the question is that, where are you on that journey towards your eternal destiny? Okay, so here is a conviction I want to represent before you. I believe very strongly from the study of Scripture and from the examples from both ancient and modern history that God has blueprint for all of our lives. God never sends us into the world without a plan, without an agenda. So it is extremely important that you are on, always on a journey of discovery, that you are always on a journey with God, that you are running with God, running towards your eternal destiny, living your life in a way that your life is increasingly meaningful. I know that many people are in transition in 2020. There are people that, have, that are moving uh, in one season of life, transiting to another season of life. And remember, there are principles that govern these transition moments. One of those principles is the principle of trust. It's also, the other important principle there is also the principle of alignment, the fact that, that God's plan for your life is not changing. You're just moving from season to season. The other principle is the principle of capacity and endurance, okay, that you must have, develop the capacity. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't, just have hope. Don't give up hope. The other important principle is always to remember to go back in your books and see what God has done for you in the past. And remember that because God has been faithful, that God will always be faithful. Because he's a faithful God. God is a faithful God. So in those moments of uncertainty, when you're in transition, when things are going on and you can't always interpret them, it's important to remember that because that the fact that you're uncertain about what the future holds does not mean that God is uncertain. Because the way of God, the way of man is always in the hands of God. It's not in the hands of man, but it's always in the hands of God. So remember that when you don't know, God knows. All you have to do is trust him. And by the way, every person goes through these moments in life where there are gaps, where there are questions, where there are confusing moments. It's called the wilderness experience. It's actually a training moment. In fact, God will often send people to the wilderness in order to prepare them either for a season or for their life calling. So if you feel you're in the wilderness where there's not much going on, you're not hearing much, there's not much fruitfulness that is like patch ground in front of you, don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. It's a divine setup by God to prepare you, cleanse you, prune you, and to pre-prepare you and to repurpose you and help you fulfill the agenda of God for your life. Okay, so that's question one. Where are you? Just follow me for a moment, okay? Where are you in the context of where of 2020? Where are you in the context of God's plan for your life? The next important question, okay, is where are you going? Praise the Lord. I want to ask you, where are you going? I have taken many trips in the context of life. I've been to many places, and I, I thank God for that. But I mean, when I mean trips, I mean I have I have gone from one city to another city, whether it was in Nigeria, maybe going from Lagos to Mahia, or going from Enugu to Lagos, or going from maybe Boston to Paris, or going from Paris to Lagos, or going from Lagos to Istanbul, or going from Istanbul to Kiev, or just travel, or simple travel, going from, from, from Ikeja, to Victoria Island. It could be very simple. It could be as simple as going from one city in Massachusetts to another city. It could be going from New York to upstate New York. It could be very simple going from Maryland, maybe Silver Street to Baltimore, or even from just from city to city. When you make these trips, it's you do not only prepare for your departure journey, you also prepare for your arrival. Because if you don't prepare for your arrival, when you get there, you find that little things like a comb, just a comb for your hair or a toothbrush, to brush your teeth, in maybe in the night or in the morning, 
not having it could be very upsetting because what is so easy to do in the city of your residence can be more challenging in the city of your visitation. So when we say, where are you going? Okay, we've said that question. He said, where are you in the context of the year? And they will say, where are you going? The reason we ask that question is to understand precisely where we are in relation to where we want to arrive. So I want to ask you, where are you going? Where, where are you going in God's plan? Where are you going in 2020? What adjustments have you made this year? I know that we have been digitally challenged, all of us. All of us have had to do things we've not done in the years gone by. So certain things have taken us by storm. And I want to ask you that where exactly are you going? Where does God want you by December 2020? It's not by strength. By, the Bible says by strength shall no man prevail. It's not by your capacity. It's not by human strength, no. But because Jesus enjoined us to sit down and plan, I'm sitting down with you and we're planning. Where will you be in December 2020? Um, it is extremely important that we sit down to reflect. How, where am I going? Where will I be? In that way, you say, what kind of help do I need? What kind of help do I need from God? When Jesus left heaven to come to earth, everything was pre-prepared. He already died on the cross before he started. The reason Jesus refused to be crowned a king on his first advent was simply because it was not part of the plan. They came to make him a king. He refused. There were many times that people were praising him and he dodged away. There were times that he refused to appear before people. When he was with his siblings and they were going to Jerusalem for a major feast, they said to him, you said you're the Messiah. Why don't you come along with us and declare your stand? He said, you have your time. My time is not always. So he said to them, you can go. And then he stole away to the feast. He came privately. He came clandestinely. He came secretly. Why? There was a plan. The plan was that there was a program, a calendar. There was a time of his showing to the nation of Israel. So I want to ask you, do you understand the seasons of your life? Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3, for example, very briefly. Ecclesiastes. Let's look at this very briefly. I read verse 1, King James Version. It says, to everything there is a season. What season is this for you? Hallelujah. There is a time for every purpose under heaven. So as we talk about the remaining part of 2020, what season are you in and what purpose should you be focused on? There is a time to be born and a time to die. There is a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Wonderful. There is a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build. There is a time to plan and a time to execute that plan. There is a time to make adjustments. Okay? And then as we look at the question, where are you going? Where are you? We're going to consider the final part of that question. How do you get there? How do we get there? Praise the Lord. How do we get there? How do we get there? What do I need to do? So this is a, the, a very important aspect of this class today. How do I get there? What must I do to get there? There are three things that are extremely important if we're going to get to where we're going. And these, are, these things are constant. They say the Japanese ask why seven times, and they keep on asking why. And I, I found that to be extremely or, or useful in life, to just keep asking the right questions. There are three steps that are important. The first step is, what adjustments must I be making in my life on a daily basis? In other words, whom should I be becoming? Who am I now? Who should I be becoming? What adjustments should I be making? The second part is, how do I use my time? How can I employ time? How can I employ time in my favor? How can I employ time? And the third part is, how do I really develop a plan, a daily plan that can assist me in my journey towards God and towards the fulfillment of this purpose that God has for us? So let's go back to them. Because we're saying, how do you get there? And we're saying, number one is, what adjustments should I be making in my personal life? When God designed us and sent us into the world, he had a plan, yes. 
But we go through an evolutionary process to become that person to fulfill God's plan. Moses was not ready to fulfill the plan of God. And yet that plan was for him. He went through years of training. The training could have been delayed. But even though he could perceive in his heart that he was the man that God was sending to deliver the people of Israel, Moses was not yet the deliverer. Potentially he was a deliverer at birth. But there was a gap between being doing that deliverance or being that person that make the deliverance or lead that deliverance and who he was at birth. And yet potentially he was. Okay? So Joseph had a dream, defining dream, to be the prime minister of Egypt. Of course, the Joseph that had a dream and the Joseph that fulfilled the dream were the same person by name, by personality, but not exactly the same person by character. He had gone through a process. He had been through many, many things that prepared him. The Bible says that though Jesus was the son of God, that he learned obedience by the things he suffered. There were things that Jesus had to learn, even though he was the son of God. John the Baptist was in the wilderness until the day of his showing. Paul the Apostle went to the, into the wilderness of Arabia. Jesus ordained to him that they might be with him, that he might train them, prepare them, and send them forth. The reason we go through a schooling system or an educational system is to equip us for our calling. The school itself may help us discover the calling, may help us accept the calling. The school itself does not confer the calling upon us. And yet, each of us needs to be educated for our calling or to become the person God wants us to be. What this means is this. Somebody praise the Lord. Is that being a doctor, God saying, you're going to practice medicine. Being the word of medicine doesn't mean you're ready. You go through a medical education. So when we say, what must I do to get there? We're, one of the questions we're asking in that question is that, what am I becoming? What do I need to become? What adjustments must I make? How am I preparing myself? There are always adjustments in mindset. The biggest adjustment we make in life is a mindset and our attitude towards life. The reason this is extremely important is because the way each of us responds to adversity will define our destiny. The way we comport ourselves in moments of difficulty, which is a reflection of our inner capacity or character, will define our destiny. People have said that character is destiny. What they are really saying is that a man's responses to life, which is dependent on his character, defines the man's destiny. So I want to ask you, how are you responding to life? What kind of person are you? That's why Je Je James in the general epistle said this. James said, he said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith develops character, develops capacity, patience. Every one of us must go through a process of the development of our character, of capacity, of abilities. God, yes, we have innate things God gave us. We are born with talent. We are born with all kinds of things. But each of those things must be developed. Even the fruit of the Spirit, which is the definition of character, has to be developed, okay? So today, I'm asking you, what kind of person are you becoming? Are you becoming a person of value? Are you becoming a person that's able to add value? Are you a Christian or do you need to become a Christian? Are you a gentleman or do you need to become a gentleman? Are you a person of capacity or do you need to become a person of capacity? The Bible says that God killeth and maketh a life. Nobody can survive by themselves. Nobody is strong by themselves. We have to go to God and ask God to help us. And there are many ways we transform. Okay, But before I get into that, let me go to the next point. The next point says that how are you employing the resource of time? How have you used your time in 2020? This was one of those upsetting years that we had a choice to make. Like somebody has said, we needed to mine the treasure of time. Brethren, friends from around the world, time is the essence of life. Time is what our life is made of. The, uh, the way we use time, the way we employ time, will, will eventually write the story of our life. Okay. So here's the point I want to make here. Um, there must be time for everything. There's a time to take a vacation, a time to take a rest. I know that we have been forced into rest, and some of us have, are becoming maybe social media fatigued because some people have been so active, bombardment with WhatsApp messages day after day and so on and so forth. Whatever happens, you must have developed a process or a time, a, a time system that helps you to maximize your life. You know, from your waking moment to your sleeping time, there must be some kind of program that is helping you. The very essence of this part is that we must spend or invest our time in a way that we are building our lives to add value in those areas where we need value. So when a man does the investigation of your life, you find out that you, 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 you have areas in life where you need help. It's in those areas you create the time to do the things that you need to do. For some people, 
is developing of character. For some people, it's developing of skill. For some people, it's developing of intimacy with God. For some people, it's attending to their school books. For some people, it's taking a break. For some people, it's being the president of a country. For some people, it's being involved in the in their sphere of influence. Maybe whether it's whether they educate us, whether they are media practitioners, whether they are entertainers, whatever you do for the, whether you're a nurse in the hospital, whether you're a medical doctor, whatever you do, you need time to grow in that profession. How are you using time? How are you using time? Do you have a time management program that is helping you? Are you taking advantage of the software and all the things that are available today, Google Calendar and the rest of them, the things that have been set? You can, whether you're using a physical book, you're using a software, what's important is this, that at the end of the day, the Sami said, teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. Teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. And Paul the Apostle enjoined us, instructed us, he says that we should be circumspect with time, knowing that the days are evil. Mind the use of time. And he said that we should not be drunk with wine, but that we should take time to continuously be filled with the Spirit so that we can manage our time well and ultimately manage our life. We have said it before and I repeat it, that the way we manage our life is by managing our time. So I want to ask you, have you used your time in 2020 to equip yourself? What books have you read? How are you doing with your Bible reading? What about your prayer life? What about your devotional life? How are you relating with God? Have you become more like God? Have you taken advantage of the lockdown to increase in your, in your godliness? The Bible said that Paul said that godliness with contentment is great gain. And it says that godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of a life which now is and that which is come. Godliness means spirituality. It's called spiritual formation, the process of developing in Christ-likeness. What about your area of career and profession, your calling? Have you merged your career and your profession? Have you merged it? Thank you very much. Have you merged your career and profession? Okay. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I want to ask you, how are you faring with life? How are you doing? Have you grown in your career in 2020? In what areas have you grown? Have you grown in Christ-likeness? Are you more competent today? What a blessing. What a pleasure it is to work with people that are competent or to do something competently or to make the commitment to keep growing, to do things in a way that you are growing in knowledge. What a blessing. What a, what a refreshing to be able to be a master or whatever God has called you to be. The greatest way we can employ time is to use it to become the person we need to be in order to do the thing that God has called us to do. Remember that there are two things God wants from us. He wants us to be like him and wants us to live like him. The Bible says that we are created in the image of God after his likeness. Image, to look like God, likeness, to function like him. So looking like God, in other words, whenever, whenever people meet us, increasingly, we remind them of God. It's a tough, 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 tough call. It's a tall order. But that's the goal of a Christian life, that I'm transforming on a daily basis. And then people can depend upon me in order to see that the work of God is done. When things depend upon you, will it get done? Will you achieve the desired results? May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. And, and then, as we pull all this together, the question is that we've looked at three, these three important questions. And remember that we're dealing with how to make the most of the remaining part of the year in 2020, despite the pandemic, despite the lockdown. So as we begin to pull all this together, I want to ask you, in what areas do we need divine assistance or do you need divine assistance? Okay, so let me go back to question one. Okay, you remember we looked at three questions. Where are you? Where are you going? How do you get there? So where are you? We've dealt with that. Then we talked about where are you going? And we've talked about the fact that you have to ask yourself, based on what you know, where are you going? And if you don't understand it, you can then start to make pray the prayers of inquiry. Okay? And then the final question was, how do we get there? In this last part, this final question of how do we get there, um, we'll be praying in a moment. And I want to encourage you to be open to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are as a Christian, there are certain general assignments God has given to us. Remember, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is not optional. This is something we must do. Praise the Lord. And then he says, go, make disciples of others. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But you know that we have individual responsibility to grow in our personal lives. You have a, personal, you have a responsibility. And how do you go? The Bible tells us that as you go, the interpretation of that passage as you go, it means that each of us will go in a place of calling or in a sphere of influence. So I want to ask you, how have you fared? Are your neighbors feeling your impact in 2020? What adjustments must you make? As a spiritual community, we cannot abandon the call to missions, to be able to use our lives to make sure that it counts at the end of time. 
indeed, it's been my pleasure to 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 speak to you this day, and I and I thank God for the opportunity. And I I I I want I'm going to be praying in a moment. I'm going to pray in a moment. I want to decree that you will be properly aligned to God's purposes for your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree divine alignment to God's purposes. In the name of Jesus, in any way there is God. Makataba da 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 dos. Any way. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. I decree divine alignment in the name of Jesus. That you will not miss the best that God has for you. I decree stability in every area of your life, in your family, in your calling, in your in your in your in your work with God, in every area. In the name of Jesus, mark a post. So go to bada gada bada dos. Le gaba ba 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 da 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 da. Kasa kifre kete poto ko so ko fre ko to bada gada bada dos. Ba 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 da 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 da. Kasa kifre kete mana gada bada da 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 dos. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Oh God, mark a bada da 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 dos. Now, I know that for those of you listening. And you, you might be challenged in one area or the other. There may be the challenge of resources. You know, people always, and one of these, one of the things that is, of course, a global challenge is, you know, saying that so much has happened in 2020. This was adding to what was the state of the world as we came to the end of 2019. The unemployment rate has risen along the world, around the world. And it has, I mean, it's, 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 it's. it's it's, it's, it's basically a very challenging situation. You know, it's gone over the roof in many places. I mean, there has been definitely a cre an increase of, on, you know, on the percentage of unemployed people in society just because businesses were closing down and all kinds of things were going on because productivity was going down. I mean, a lot of things were slowed down. A lot of things are disappearing. Perhaps new businesses are even going to have to emerge, which is, which is forced upon us. Okay, so I don't know precisely where you are. I don't know exactly what you're going through. Um, you can be in the person that in the place where you're saying, what do I, how do I make the adjustment? But remember this, that God never leaves his own in the place of confusion. God is, God continues to be in charge of this world. What Jesus said to us is what I want to leave with you. I believe it's a very practical kind. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Make seeking God's kingdom your priority. Even in this season, you say, but I don't have food on my table. Seek first the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Make it the priority of your life. Um, we are all physically removed from each other, so I may not be able to meet you and to give you counsel physically. But I want to say that as you make his kingdom the priority of your life, that God will use so many practical ways to come to your aid and to help you. If God takes care of the lilies of the field, and the best that fly in the air. He takes care of the flowers and takes care of every little creature in order beauty and does not allow the best to starve to death. Remember the birds? You, if you look outside, look into the sky, I don't know where you are, you can see the birds flying around. What about the trees jo enjoying the seasons of life? If God takes care of them and takes care of the flowers in all their blooming and beauty, he told us in Matthew chapter 6, that I will take care of you. So I want to say that don't be afraid. Don't lose hope. You are not hopeless. In the name of Jesus, you are not hopeless. You are not without hope. Let me read that passage to us. Somebody praise the Lord. I want to read that passage. Thank you, Father. We thank you indeed. We thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. I'm reading verse 25 of Matthew chapter 6, okay? It says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. It's not the life more than meat and the body than rabbit. Verse 26, Behold the fowls of the air, these are the best of it, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bars, yet your heavenly Father feeded them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Friends, the Bible says that the lilies of the field, that we should consider how they grow. It says they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet, Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed better than them. I want to ask you, if God takes care of the birds of the air, the flowers in the field, that, these are not the flowers at home. 
These are wild flowers that no man is taking care of. This is not cultivated by man. These are the flowers of home, or around their homes. These are what you might call, sometimes they say bush flowers or wild flowers. That means that they're not, nobody's really taking care of this or cultivating them. And it says the beds of the air, the flowers, and then it talks about the lilies of the field also, the outfield, right? And Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Then he says, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall God not much more cloth us? And he says, oh, we of little faith. May I encourage you? Have faith in God. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. It's well with you. You will not starve to death. Adjust your mindset. Embrace purpose. Embrace destiny. The world has need of you. Every problem around you is asking for a solution. You can be the answer. Everything we admire in history, modern history, has been people preferring solutions to the challenges of life. You were created on target and purpose. Don't lose hope. Have faith in God. I pray. I pray that in this week we're entering, in the name of Jesus, that the wisdom of God shall overshadow you. God will bless you, give you wisdom. Seek the wisdom. He said, ask for wisdom and he'll give us. He said that God will give us wisdom and he doesn't operate. Nothing is impossible with God. Absolutely nothing. And I thank you for listening. And I tell you that as you take these things to heart, don't lose hope. You are not hopeless. You are not a victim. You are a victor and a victoria. Don't lose hope. Have faith in God and have hope in him. Have, believe in God. He said, I will, I will provide for you. I will preserve your life. I will answer your prayers. God says, ask and you shall receive. Are you asking? Don't complain. Don't, 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 no, stop the complaining. Ask, ask and you shall receive. He says, seek and you shall find. And knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh will find or find it. And he that knocketh, it shall be opened unto them. These are levels of prayer. Ask. Nothing is impossible with him. He that created you, the creator of all things, has a specific purpose for you. And he has gone ahead of you. And he has done everything well. And all things are beautiful in his time. That's how the writer, the preacher concludes. He says, even though there's a time for every season and a purpose for everything, he says, all things are beautiful in his time. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, Father, because we know that all things are beautiful in your time. You have placed eternity in our hearts, and we cannot add or remove from that which you've done. Oh God, that eternity you have placed in our heart, reveal it, unveil it, repurpose it, help us to identify with it. Is there anybody despairing of life? Looking for food to eat? Father, you said, we should ask you, give us this day our daily bread. Oh God, oh God, may their daily bread today not pass them by. In the name of Jesus, oh God, and those who are crying out, saying clarity, clarity. Father, we decree clarity for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, as many as are in a state of confusion, Father, people have written, have shared experience with many people who are confused, who are going through challenges, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that, Father, that you will illuminate their path of travel and give them clarity in the name of Jesus. We well, thank you, Father. Oh, God. Oh, God. Father, it's also been said that there's been increased violence and abuse, spousal abuse and physical abuse in homes because of the lockdown. People have been locked in. Father, we are asking for your intervention. Let the wisdom of God prevail. In the name of Jesus, we well, thank you, Father. Father, help us to possess our soul and to run the race that you have said before us. For this, we have an incredible moment to make adjustments in all of our lives. As many as are looking for wisdom to make adjustments, to be able to take time. Father, unpack it, unravel it, and know how to use that time well. And to be able to manage time so they can manage their life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have covered so many, we have covered so many, um, so many uh, bits, bits here that we've offered people, we've covered We've covered um, suggestions we've made to people. We've covered advice. We've covered systems. We've mentioned things that people can take advantage of. We've talked about what, how to plan our lives. Father, we've talked about how to possess time. We've talked about how to make the adjustment, how to sit down. And, and those of us who are still thinking, I don't know how to really plan my time. Father, we pray that even as we follow these little steps that were presented, that you help us all to be able to maximize our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, 
we pray. Now, before I round up, this is a thought that came to me. So somebody might still be out there and you're thinking, um, um, Mr. Preacher, Pastor John, this morning I still have some challenge with knowing exactly what to do. I'm still in a state of confusion and I don't know how to use my time well. Praise God. Let me give you this advice. What you can do, one of the steps you can take is to sit down in this new week and look at your time and life from your waking moment to your sleeping time and ask yourself, how have I spent it in the past? And how would I like to spend it going forward? Usually what drives that is a goal, which is why we've been, talking, why we've been sharing this topic. Because if you're not working towards something, it might be difficult to have the pressure, the pressure of time, right? Or to understand planning, okay? But here's what I would say. This is what has helped me and I'm still working on this, okay? Because I, I, I sat down to think, Prayerfully, you know, engage God. And then you're getting a sense of direction. You have a sense of direction. So whether it's for the year or for a month. And then by the time you look at the week, because I have deadlines on a daily basis, you know, I have a program on Monday I must be ready for. I have programs on Tuesday I must be ready for. I have things I do on Wednesday I must be ready for. I have things I do on Thursday I have to be ready for it. On Fridays I have things I'm doing. On Saturdays, I'm getting ready for Sunday service. On Sunday, I'm preparing for the actual service itself. And the, so the, the week is on a, it's on a weekly routine. So because of that, I do not have a lot of time when I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I, I come to the place where you're a bit exhausted. Okay. So what, but what, what I'm trying to say in effect is this, is that what is it that you're supposed to be doing with your life? Then take time this week if you've not done this or to review this. How do you spend that time from Monday to Sunday? From your waking moment, it's, you're not perfect. You'll never have a perfect time. But you know, you wake up at a particular time. You have some devotion. We've gone through that in this class, you know, Sunday broadcast, okay? And then you start your day. What are your daily priorities? Are you looking for a job? Where should you be going to? Are you trying to create a new business? How should you be spending your time? So I want to encourage you, do that this week. When we come back next week, we'll talk about it some more. And then we're going to be eventually going to radical discipleship. Jesus made some radical statements. He said that he that comes after me, that does not hate his father and mother and brother and sister and wife, yea, indeed his own life also, cannot be my disciple. How can God be calling us to a life of hate? Why should God ask us to hate ourselves? But we can't jump in there until we're done. It's been so nice hosting you today. I look forward to seeing you once again. Um, if you, I want to encourage you to, to continue to support this broadcast, continue to support the ministry. Um, I believe that as we partner together, that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness unto all nations, and then the end must come. Blessings to your family. I decree order in your life. Increase divine stability, divine illumination, divine capacity. May God enlighten the path of your travel. May you see clearly, may you hear from God. Every confession. May the power of the Holy Spirit blow it away from your life. Embrace life. Don't be afraid to embrace the future. Despite the uncertainties, God wants you to partner with Him to make a difference over your life. Those who have lived before us, they have passed on the baton to our own generation and we have to run the race and pass on the baton if Jesus does not come in our lifetime. God bless you. Enjoy this week and every day of your life. Thank you and bye for now. And remember to support the work. We're going to be posting those details on the site. If you watch by Instagram or by Facebook, you'll have the opportunity to do that. And every seed sown, the fruits of your righteousness will be multiplied back unto you. We're not ashamed of this gospel of the kingdom. Bye.